Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proenza and today we're going to talk about front-end development library scores of FreeCodeCamp. So basically, now that we finished the responsive web design course, we're going to start this new course in here, where we're going to continue learning more about HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Then we're going to learn more about React, Redux, and the, the goal of today is working with Bootstrap. So Bootstrap is the first course we're going to work. Basically, Bootstrap is a front-end framework where we can use some pre-built templates of buttons, forms, some pre-built styles that we can use in our code. So for example, here is the documentation of Bootstrap, and what if we want to create a button with this style? This is already made, so we just need to work with the, we just need to use the class of this button and this will create for us the button that we want, okay? And for other components as well, this is the goal of the today's video, okay? So don't worry, right now this might be a little bit complicated, but you will see that this will save your time a lot, okay? So let's just start. The first part in here, we're going to work with this cat photo app again, okay? They changed some things, but we're going to continue styling uh, our cat photo app project. First, they're telling us that if we want to use Bootstrap in our code, we need to link here this uh, style sheet with this href, okay? They already did this for us, but every time you're working with Bootstrap, you have to use this link because Bootstrap, you can think like CSS. It's the same idea, the same relationship, okay? Now we should create, uh, we should nest all of our HTML except the link and the style in a div element with the class container fluid. So we're not going to wrap our link, neither our style. We're going to wrap from our line 27 div. And we're going to give here a class container fluid. And then in the end of our code here, so after our line 54, we're going to close our div. So now that's everything done. Let's run the test. Great. Let's go to the next challenge. Now they are telling us to make image mobile responsive. So basically we're going to create a new image below the existing one. So let's find our existing image. It's an href in here. Okay. So here we're going to create an image. All right. And we're going to give the source of this one that they're telling us in here. Great. And then we're going to give, let me close here the image tag. Perfect. It will be great if the image could be exactly the width of the phone screen. And right now we see that this is bigger than the phone screen. So to do this, we're going to add the image responsive class to our image and this will make it fit perfectly. So here in our image tag, I'm going to give a class equals to image uh, IMG responsive. Responsive. And let's see, now it fit our screen. Perfect. Let's run the test and we pass. Let's go to the next challenge. So now in this one, we want to center the text using Bootstrap. Okay, so we can add a class text center and it will center our H2. That is our cat photo app. So here in our H2, we're going to add one extra property. So far we have the red text. So to add another class, we give a space and we can say text center. And if we see now our H2 is in the center of the page. Great. Now we're going to create a bootstrap button like we saw previously here on the bootstrap documentation. So to do this, they are telling us to create a button after the image of the cat that we added. So here's the image of the cat that we added. We're going to create here the button tag. So button. Okay. They are telling us to give a class equals to btn. Actually, I'm going to leave the class empty because I want to show you what happens. So I'm going to create the button tag. Here we have our button. We can barely see. Okay. They are telling us to write the message like. So we have here the button. Now with Bootstrap, we're able to create some styling for this. So if I add the first property btn, it will create this, this kind of this aspect of a button where the border is a little bit better. And they're also telling us to use btn dash default. And this create the second style that's changing here, the border to white. And when we hover, it, it has this uh, kind of a color of gray. Okay, so this is pretty much what we need. For the create a block element bootstrap button. So what are we going to do? When we use btn default, if we see here in the project, the button here has this proper width and it will change the width depending on the size of the text we're writing down. So for example, if I add here cats, like cats, it will expand the button to contain the word like cats. But what they're telling us to do, they're telling us to use the btn block because the btn block will scratch to fill your page entire horizontal space and any element following it will flow onto a new line. So basically we want to create a button that will fit the whole row in here. So we're going to add this extra class btn dash block. And if we see here right now, the button gets the whole width. Okay. That's pretty much what we need. Let's run the test and we pass. Now they are telling us to change the color of our button. And like I mentioned, here we have these colors, okay? We have primary, secondary, success, danger, warning, info, light, and dark. And depending on the color we use in here, the name of the button, it will change the color. Here they are telling us to use primary. So let's see what happens. If I change here, instead of btn default to btn primary, 
it should change the color of the button to blue, okay? If I use danger and we know that in here, in our bootstrap, danger is red. Let's see if they change the color to red. So here, BTN danger, it will change to red. And you can play around with all of these colors that we have in here, okay? In our case, we want to use primary. So here, I'm going to say primary and then we will pass the test. Great. Now they are telling us to create a new button and we're going to play around with other colors. Here they're telling us to use BTN info and we know that BTN info will be this kind of blue in here. Okay, so here I'm going to copy the button we, we created. Okay, and I'm going to paste right after. It will create a second button, but we're going to change some things. Here we want to change the message to info. And here we're going to change instead of BTN primary, it will be BTN info. And we're going to get this uh, light blue in here. All right, that's it. The next step, we're going to do the same, okay, again, but now we're going to use the danger to delete. It will be a delete button with color red. So this way we're going to use the danger. So I'm going to copy. I'm going to use here delete. And here we have the message delete. If I change here to danger, it will change the color to red, okay? And we're going to remain the same other properties. So now the next one, use the bootstrap grid to put elements side by side. So basically when we're working with bootstrap, the, the bootstrap uses it as a responsive 12 column grid systems, which make it easy to put elements into a row and specify each element's relative uh, width. So let's take a look in here. We can put everything in a row like we're seeing in here. We have this div row, okay? And then inside of this row, we have three columns, one, two, and three. And this way we have three columns with the same width, okay? Then we can work instead of having the same width with can manipulate in different width as well. Okay, here they are in the same width again, but here we can make one that is wider than the other ones. But only you, you have to manipulate the number 12. Basically 12 is the total uh, amount you have in your screen and you have to use the numbers from one to 12 to, to fit the columns inside, okay? In our case, we are working with the XS that it's the smaller screen that we have available because we're working here in a mobile app, okay? And here we wanna create, we wanna work with this three button that we have in here. We want to put these three buttons in the same row. So to do this, we're going to split our number 12 into three. We're going to divide by three, our number 12. And 12 divided by three is four. So the space that we're going to get for each button in here will be four. Okay, that's why they're telling us to use this column XS4. So let's see, I know it's a little bit complicated, but let's work on this together. First, we're going to create a div class equals to row to put everything in a row. And we're going to close after the button, okay? So now they are in a row, but we can barely see because we now we need to work with the columns, okay? For the first button, I'm gonna create a new div, class equals to column XS4, okay? And I'm gonna put the button inside and I'm gonna close my div in here. So basically now we have, this is the, the number four for the width, okay? So now we have this, we're splitting this into three pieces, this row. Now we have to do the same for the other one. So I'm gonna copy this div, and I'm going to paste for the other button. I'm going to put the button inside and here I'm going to do the same. I'm going to put this div and I'm going to put the button inside. But we need to close the div, okay? That's why it's not working the way that it's supposed to. So here we close the div. Okay, and now we need to close the last div that we're working with. And now we have the three buttons in the same row with the same width, okay? That's pretty much what we need. So now they are telling us to start removing some things that we have here in our style and use the properties from Bootstrap to create the color and to size here the image, okay? So what are we gonna do? First, they are telling us to remove the red text and the paragraph in here. So we're removing the, the style and also this is smaller image. Okay, so we are removing this style, all right? Now, how can we fix? We're gonna add the bootstrap in the paragraph. So here in the paragraph, we're gonna give a class equals true. Uh, so here they're telling us to remove the paragraph element that contains the de a dead link. So we are removing the paragraph. They are telling us to remove the red text from the H2. So here we're gonna remove this red text and we're gonna replace with text primary. So if we say here text primary, it will change the color of the text to this blue that is from the primary color, okay? Then we're gonna remove the smaller image from our class in here in the first image, and we're gonna use the image responsive that we used before for the second image, image responsive. And now it fit a little bit better. So let's see. If we're running the test, we're not only passing the last one. So let me see, response. I'm missing the letter here, responsive. Let's run the test and we're passing, that's it. So we're not removing the CSS to start working with the bootstrap, okay? Now they're telling us to use a spam to target inline elements. 
Basically, when we use spam element, we can put several elements on the same line and even style different parts on the same line differently. So we're going to use a spam element. We're going to nest the word love inside the P element. So we're going to work with this word love here in the things that cat love. So let's find it in here. Things that cat love. We're going to add a spam tag. Okay, so let's wrap this spam here. And what are we going to do? We're going to give the spam a class text danger. So we're going to change the word love to red. So here class equals to text danger. And if we see right now, now the word love is in red. Now here, let me see. Here's how you would do for this P that has this element cat hate. And I think we have to do the same for cat hate or not. I think this is the one that we have to do. Okay, only for the love. They were just giving an example. Now we're going to continue working with grid system, okay? And now our idea is to put the heading, cat photo app, and the image in the same row, okay? So here, let's grab our h2. I'm going to say div class equals to row, okay? And I'm going to put the h2 and the image inside of it. And then we're going to close here the div of the row, okay? So now they are in the same row. But we can barely see. What are we going to do? We're going to nest our h2 element in a column with a number 8, so the text will be... Uh, will be eight of our screen and the other four that is missing for a completing 12 will be the image okay so here we're going to create a div class equals to column xl8 okay and here i'm going to close this div and now we need to fit the image in the right part of the cat photo app message so here i'm going to give div class equals to call xs4 okay and now the image will fit right in in the right and that's pretty much what we need okay so 